Yeah, my background is I, I grew up in Kansas City, uh, in South Kansas City and uh, Verona Hills area. And then um, after college, uh, come back and try to find a job. I uh, found uh, that to be a challenge in the, the mid-80s. Uh, believe it or not, the mid-80s was tougher to get a job than even today. Um, and uh, it was really searching for a career path, and that career path uh, amazingly turns into this economic development uh, program. I was uh, the project manager for the Missouri Department of Economic Development for about two and a half years uh, in the late uh, 80s. Uh, here in Kansas City, I was in the state office building downtown. And then I uh, had the opportunity uh, to look at coming to the Platte County Economic Development Council uh, 22 years ago. And uh, that's where we've been ever, ever since. It's uh, been an interesting uh, process. Uh, the you know, 22 years ago, I uh, was looking at was an opportunity where I could grow uh, an area that was uh, on the cusp of some uh, new things and, and was open to some new ideas about how to do it. And it's been fun to be in a place long enough to then turn around and see what those impacts have, have been. And uh, the good, uh, I think we've done some good over the, the years and have, have created a real nice uh, process. It's kind of like uh, pushing a rock up the hill. And then once you get to the top of the hill, you get to see what happens when that thing goes rolling. There's certainly some times where you wince and go, oh my gosh, that wasn't really what we were expecting. But uh, for the most part, it's been a wonderful tapestry uh, to which uh, uh, to, to use to try to create some good things. And, um, this opportunity to uh, go downtown uh, and to be with the EDC of Kansas City is really, uh, quite frankly, a, a great validation for me and the career path that I've uh, taken to be able to serve in this capacity uh, in my hometown is really quite fulfilling. Um, and I think that's going to be, a, it's going to be really a neat process and look forward to it. The most impactful one in a personal uh, basis, uh, back in 1993, uh, we had a pretty significant flood in, in the Kansas City area. We had over um, 200 businesses that went underwater in Parkville and, and Riverside. And uh, at the time, we, you know, we looked out and said, what, what, are, what are some pr programs out there to help businesses recover from that kind of a natural disaster? And it's interesting looking back again and saying, well, gosh, it seems like natural disasters are happening every other day. Um, you know, from you know, uh, Joplin, I was just in Dallas earlier this week and, you know, uh, you know, with the tornadoes and stuff. There anyway, you know, we we looked at what was out there, and the only thing that was out there was the you know, Small Business Administration disaster loan program. And, uh, we were already within a, a week or so after the flood, we're already hearing from businesses saying that takes too long, too much paperwork. We just we just need something little. So uh, we went out and and, and, and got a, a committee, and we went out and raised about one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars in a couple of weeks. Uh, and then basically did a little $5,000 signature loans, zero uh, percent, uh, to get folks back. You know, and it was really uh, the application was pretty simple. It was, um, were you in business? Were you flooded? Are you planning on coming back being a business? If you checked all those boxes, here's here's $5,000 uh, for you to uh, do that. And we and we did it zero percent. And I say it in tongue in cheek, but not by much. Uh, that we did zero percent because I wasn't smart enough to figure out compound interest payments were going to have to be. So it was easy to say five thousand to you. You give us back five thousand when you get your you know, back on your feet. We ended up having a, a, a very significant return on that. Uh, I remember at the time we had some of our banks, bank partners, and they were just smiling and said, "You'll never see that money come back." Uh, once we were through with the program, uh, our collection rate they said well, they don't get that normally. But what it did was you really saw the impact. So to go back to the you know, kind of the question of, of what was the biggest uh, and neatest project, that, that was neat because you really saw the impact of what it is that you did. Um, I have no doubt that those dollars went to groceries uh, for uh, some of the families that own uh, shops uh, in, in Parkville. I know that some of those went to just flat payroll to cover payroll for some of the jobs and the people in, say, uh, Riverside, and um, you know, so that so you could really see what the impact was, and that was really really neat. Small businesses. I think my focus uh, going into the EDC 
I've been around the EDC since its inception. I actually started with the state the same year that the, or the EDC was formed. Uh, so I have uh, seen uh, and been involved in a lot of what the history of the EDC has been. Uh, historically, uh, the EDC has been very much in a, a place-based model. When I say that, uh, very heavily focused on real estate, real estate development, real estate real redevelopment. Uh, and it's, it's not surprising because the tools that w we have in our quiver um, are based upon a real estate development, a real estate abatement, those kinds of things, and those kind of programs. And certainly we see uh, many of the great projects that have come from that. Um, but we're going to shift, the EDC is going to shift its focus. Uh, we're going to go from a, a, a traditionally place-based focus to a people-based focus. When I talk about, you know, again, that impact that we've had with, say, the, the project, be the, the, the Harley or the Zona Rosa, I don't go to the Zona Rosa and go, oh, look at those pretty buildings. I look at the people and the impact that's had on people, be it in the jobs, being in those opportunities, place to shop, same thing with the Harley. I don't care that it has a brown stripe or a blue stripe around this building. I just care that there's people that are in there that have dreams and, and uh, are able to, to have a, a great quality of life and think about their families and, and, and do good things. That's really what we're going to focus on. So we're, going to, we're still going to have those tools. We're still going to have a place-based uh, um, process because that's kind of what we're given. But we're going to start uh, looking at things in a, a people-based uh, process there. And what does that mean from a program standpoint? That means we're going to get involved more in the entrepreneur side. We're going to get out and start talking again more heavily into the business community and start you know, really trying to bring a workforce development conversations uh, to, to the forefront and how those things can, you know, in, in maybe a bigger picture, uh, but nevertheless are as important to those business conversations than that particular real estate uh, development. Um, and really from the, from the place-based uh, processes, we're going to streamline those processes to the point that we are going to be technically pure and we're going to be able to do those things in a way uh, that, as I told, told the mayor, that my goal for the agencies, the acronyms that we, we monitor and, and manage, so is if, if we have a tax and jurisdiction that is sitting in his office yelling or having a policy discussion, maybe, uh, relative to the application of a tax increment financing plan. I want that conversation to be on the pure public policy conversation of whether or not it's an appropriate use of that tool. I do not want one of the process, uh, one of the uh, conversations to be whether or not the EDC did their job right or wrong. So from that perspective, we're going to uh, try as best we can to be as uh, technically pure to the public process that we are given by the city, uh, city council uh, to be perfect uh, in that. So that these conversations that are important conversations from a public policy standpoint take place in that pure environment of whether or not that's a right tool or a wrong tool to be using in that instance and then let the policymakers make the decision of whether or not that's uh, applicable. Um, but those uh, agencies are going to support a grander and a broader vision of economic development for the city. You know, our, our role as it relates to uh, other initiatives that are happening in the community uh, one of the conversations that I've had with uh, uh, the EDC's executive committee and, and uh, board is that we, the EDC needs to be a player in those conversations, not leading them necessarily, but one of the things that I am tasked to do is to create uh, great relationships with the alliance agencies that are out there. I think it, it speaks well to a community that it's being creative enough to come up with new initiatives and thoughts about how to build a better uh, community. Um, the, the, the Chamber's Big Five, as you, you say, that's a perfect example of a coalescing of ideas. The EDC needs to be a part of those conversations. And because even though these are great ideas, eventually they have to turn into initiatives that actually do the, the idea. Maybe just to do a plan doesn't mean it, but there's an implementation there. And I fully expect that the EDC is going to have a portion of the implementation of a lot of these initiatives. Um, again, we don't have to be the lead agency, um, but we need to be at the table to kind of say, hey, what about this and what about that? So we need to be, we need to build a, 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 an organization that can be as creative as the community you know, that says, you know, this is, this, this is, we are not in a competition. 
deal. Economic development has been sold uh, as a win-lose dynamic. A particular development wins, a, a certain part of the community loses. And I have to work real hard to start communicating to folks that that's not the case. I mean, if it kind of go back to the old Stephen Covey thing, win-win or no deal. Yeah. Uh, and we need to you know, get folks again to understand that there may be a policy conversation differential, but we all know that at the end of the day that economic development The Missouri versus win. Kansas thing. You know, I'm a Mizzou guy. Uh, I'm also somebody that uh, is my passion is history. All right. I lived on Santa Fe Trail. And I grew up, which is only a, 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 a you know, half block from Kansas. This Missouri versus Kansas thing, uh, not to be uh, defeatist, but to say, you know, we've been shooting at each other for 150 years. Nothing I'm going to do is going to stop that shooting. That's just going to be a competitive pressure that's going to be there. What I've told the EDC staff is that uh, we are not going to whine about it. I'm tired. We are not going to be whining about how the Jayhawks are either being good to us or being mean to us. But we're going to step up. We're going to compete. We're going to compete as best we can, as hard as we can. We're going to be very passionate about that. If we lose, tip our hat to the victor and say, well, we're going to, we're going to beat you next time. When we win, we'll celebrate. But we know there's another one that will be coming. Um, I'm not, uh, uh, we're not going to whine about it. Uh, it's... It is a, a strong and significant competitive dynamic. Uh, I'm not sure how we can get the genie back in the bottle, uh, particularly as it relates to office. Uh, I think that's uh, kind of one of those policy conversations we're going to really have to have. Is it's so easy to move an office these days. It used to be that at least you had to plug something in. Then you had to move your own furniture. Well, heck, we got buildings now that have furniture already going. It's all wired, and all you got to do is go left turn to work today instead of right turn to work today, and and turn on your Wi-Fi, and you're done. That's office. So, office is so footloose and fancy free right now. Um, I have no doubt that we'll get our Kansas guys to look at Missouri because that's how those incentives are based. I have no doubt that the Kansas guys are going to do the same thing. Um, so we have a long, we're going to have to have a conversation about particularly office conversation because it's just getting such an easy uh, deal. But one of the things that that you know everybody has to understand two things I'd go there. Uh, one um, on 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 office is that we have to um, understand that taxes and tax abatements or only one, one very small piece of an overall relocation conversation. The personnel and the cost of personnel so much more significant than a hundred thousand differential or a million dollar differential between over five years between a Missouri location or a Kansas location. So we have to look at it as a bigger picture. What are the environment, that office environment that is downtown or South Kansas City or the Northland how is that different and what are the other things that we need to do to be able to strengthen that as an operating environment so that, uh, yeah, we may be off by X dollars on an incentive, but yet it's still a great place to do business and it's a cool place and people are, and there's activities. Uh, you know, like I said, that's why downtown has so much better of a sales play now than it had years ago. Not that many years ago, but years ago. We got to focus in on that and making sure that we're not just bidding on money on the on the incentive side. Um, you know, it's it, that's not the only the only thing that I think is uh, out there. The other thing that we have to do is understand that there are some projects we are we are behind the eight ball. And when I say that, nobody's asked the question: Where does the CEO live? Where does the main management live? The main management lives in Leewood. There we go. That's a question that has not been asked by the press, and it's really kind of fascinating. Because that there's been studies, and I did a paper years ago, on the connectivity of the office to where the CEO lives. And there's, uh, there's some studies that show that it's fascinating how connected they are 
So, um, you know, in this market, again, we're going to step up and we're going to compete. And there's going to be some of those projects where we're going to compete and we just know that we got our hands tied behind our back relative to, you know, maybe incentives, maybe the, the offer that's happening on the other side, the offices that are over there. I mean, again, there's some wonderful options, office options uh, in uh, southern Johnson County that you just kind of go, man, that's where the investments have been the last 30 years in offices. They got, they got some power. There's a firepower there. But also we got to understand the marketplace that's out there, too, and a lot of the folks that are uh, making those decisions live out there. Yeah. That's, that's going to be hard to uh, compete with, uh, with that. But, again, um, we're not going to whine about it. We're going to step it up and compete. But we're going to, you know, we're going to lose some. We're going to win some. And uh, you know, hopefully we net out positive on, on, the, on the wins. We also need to get out of the, the conversation we need, I need to get a KC, a, 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 an EDC candidate city that works strongly with KCADC to make sure that we're starting to see more and more of our share coming in from the outside of the metropolitan area into Kansas City, Missouri. Um, so that we don't spend, I mean, even though it's real sexy from the, from the media side to only look at Missouri versus Kansas and let that kind of happen, but yet we got blocks of space that need to be filled with new people from outside the metropolitan area, and we need to put together a, a compelling argument on why a KCMO needs to be the place that these folks uh, move their business to from a New York or an L.A. or in some other international locations that KCMO is the place to, uh, to be. Um, and like I said, we're, I'm confident that we're going to uh, put together a program that's going to be competitive, uh, and we're going you know, to get after it.